Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Vostokov and today I make the first step towards a philosophy of software diagnostics. I decided to keep this presentation as short and simple as possible without using specialized philosophical jargon. If anything needs to be added or modified in the future, I create another version of it. This is also the part one of the introduction because as a practicing software diagnostician I didn't have much time to process and include all material that I planned initially. Too many crash dumps and software traces. So I promise to deliver the subsequent parts later. In this part we cover mostly phenomenological and hermeneutical approaches to software diagnostics and leave analytical approaches for the second part. In fact, I only partially cover hermeneutical approaches and mostly concentrate on phenomenological approaches. Let me prefix the presentation by extending thoughts of the great Roman physician and philosopher Galen to software diagnostics. Prerequisites are very simple here and I suppose you all like me enjoy diagnosing software problems, troubleshooting and debugging. Also philosophical attitude presupposes interest in deep meta questions. In our interpretation of meta, for example, if we ask a question what is a problem here, this is a question, but if we ask what is a problem in general, this is a meta question. Our goal here is to synthesize the philosophy of software diagnostics from the software diagnostics practice itself. Before we start with philosophy, I would like to remind you a definition of software diagnostics that we put forward in our previous webinars. Please notice the appearance of a word pattern here. So what is a pattern then? So we come to this definition of a pattern. So this definition is more general because it applies not only to software artifacts but to hardware and software diagnostics itself and, you, and if you'd like it can be applied to general diagnostics as well, to any other problems in the world. Notice also the appearance of a word problem here. Obviously, in the previous definition, the so-called abnormal software structure and behavior is also some kind of a problem. Therefore, to understand the diagnostics, thought, process and diagnostics patterns, we need to ask a further question. The first question, what is the problem? There are many definitions of a problem, especially from the problem solving perspective. But a diagnosis is not a problem solving and before doing correct diagnosis we must be sure that we have a right problem. 
But to find out whether we have a right problem, we need to perform a correct diagnosis. So we have a so-called virtual circle. So we need a very simple definition of the problem that doesn't involve a diagnosis. The solution here is to consider problems from human computer or human software interaction first. Because such interactions are everywhere and involve everyone, including the vast, vast industry of software support. So in order to find out the best definition, we opened very huge and heavy historical thesaurus of the Oxford English Dictionary two-volume set. So this is a snippet from historical thesaurus. It shows the concept variations in time and adds an additional dimension to the meaning and can be also a source of new ideas. On the slide I put an excerpt from different domains related to problem, to word, and notice that the main, dif the main meaning here is difficulty. We have a problem when we have difficulty while interacting with software. We consider inquiry, question and discussion later, probably in the second part. But with such definition of a problem as a difficulty. So let's see an example. If we have a memory leak, but if it is going unnoticeable, we don't have a problem according to this definition is difficulty. But this may become problem later. Notice also the abbreviation of problem as prob and uh, use it as such in mathematics. So also let me highlight that what I found interesting this related to difficulty so what should we do to differentiate our problem definition with uh, problem or the meaning of problem as difficulty from any other definition so we need to come up with a new word for it. We call this new definition as problem. And notice also lemma part what is a lemma part? In mathematics lemma is defined as a proven proposition which is used as a stepping stone to a larger result. In our context, it is a tentative proposition about a probable problem. Because it is often the case that a problem disappears before diagnostic starts or a problem is relative or stems from software user misunderstanding. And so we define problem as a pair. It is an issue for a software user. So it's difficulty for that user, but an understanding of it is absent or vague or incomplete. You see I put a negation here. A negation of understanding of the issue. If you know some Russian, you see the source of 
problema also linguistic. So this is the first time I see my Russian roots help me in problem solving, in problem solving the problem of the problem here. Because in Russian problem is called problema. So what is not understanding? Sometimes we are lucky and understand the problem, but most of the time we don't have its proper understanding, so we need to dig further. And so how do we understand a problem? The key to understanding is the projection of a problem to patterns. But not all patterns are good for understanding, and here we need patterns in artifacts. By an artifact we mean a memory dump or live memory, which is a sort of a memory dump, software traces and logs whose messages can be considered as fragments of memory similar to memory dumps. And so we come to a second concept called Dasein. Da, D-A in Dasein means dump artifact Dump analysis. And uh, sign here means just a sign, a pattern. If you are able to get a collection of the signs for a problem, we get full understanding of an original problem. You may have noticed that Dasein is similar to Dasein, introduced in influential being and time philosophical log from Martin Heidegger, a German philosopher. It means being there, a peculiar human being whose being is an issue for it and it has an understanding of it. In our context, Dasein, not Dasein, as in German, Dasein, it means a sign there in a dump. a peculiar software structure and behavior sign that we are aware of and have an understanding of it. And uh, note a word understanding here. We now come to the question of understanding. But before we consider understanding, we would like to note that the signs are not floating in isolation. We need a meaning structure for them. And this is called care. Originally it meant crash analysis report environment or computer analysis report analysis uh, an, a report environment. The sign is itself a meaning pattern and care is the sign underlying meaning structure. Some common underlying meaning structure. And so after that we are ready to continue with the question of understanding. And we come to hermeneutics of software diagnostics. Why we use hermeneutics here? Because we use it here because software diagnostics is a practice first, not some kind of a theory. And the software diagnostics is based on dialogue, understanding and interpretive interactions between a software diagnostician and a software user. Such meetings and dialogues are even more important in the case of 
remote interactions. Here on this diagram, I depicted possible interaction parties. For large software vendors and their customers, there can be even more intermediate interactions until finally an artifact is opened in some analysis tool. There can be several software diagnostics practitioners such as technical support engineers, escalation, technical relationship or account managers, maintenance software engineers and software product developers. Software diagnostics as a practice involves humans using software. Therefore, it is beneficial to consider both software users and software when thinking about software diagnostics. Working with patterns of defects makes one understanding of software better too. When a breakdown of a computation happens, we notice a pattern of software structure and behavior and add it to some catalog. If you analyze enough memory dumps, you definitely understand software better. Understanding also goes with interpretation. Due to various emissions, insufficient and incomplete interaction documentation, it is always possible to interpret or misinterpret problem differently due to shifting requirements, different normative and political considerations. There can be different sources for interpretation. I listed some here. And so we come to phenomenology that considers various phenomena, patterns. Here this is a, like a bit, as a, a bit non-traditional understanding of phenomenology. Originally it was considered at the beginning of 20th century as a, a application of science to human mind. I mean here herself interpretation. I became interested in phenomenology last year and here in the context of software diagnostics it is about the meaning and structure of everyday software diagnostics activities. So we consider phenomena as patterns, activities, everything related to software diagnostics. It's not Phenomenology here is not uh, in the context, uh, is not uh, restricted to uh, just software diagnostician's mind and activities. So why we use phenomenology? Because of some additional features that can be useful for holistic philosophy of software diagnostics. For example, its inclusion of the human side. I basically, I take mostly, most of phenomenology I take from Heidegger here. So we consider patterns as phenomena and uh, I also borrowed meaning structure and meaning pattern words from the book on phenomenology and hermeneutics of medicine that are referenced at the end of this presentation.
And so we come to some features of software phenomenology. I don't cover all of them here, probably in the subsequent parts. Notice also that one feature of software diagnostics is its pattern discourse. There are lots of patterns, lots of pattern catalogs. A few words about hermeneutics. This is about interpretation and understanding. Traditionally, it is associated with the Bible, theology, but it can be applied to any text, any artifact, any story, any, any narrative. Actually, it is, it is used a lot with narrative analysis, and we have lots of narrative stories in software diagnostics and uh, different types of them. Usually phenomenology goes with hermeneutics. A typical example here is problem description narratives that can be interpreted and understood with the help of problem description patterns. You can find some problem description patterns on software diagnostics in Software Diagnostics Library from Software Diagnostics Institute on dumpanalysis.org or in Memory Dump Analysis Anthology. I think most of them will be published in Volume 7. Finally, a few words about explanation. Software Diagnosis provides possible explanations for the problem after finding that signs verifying our problems and provide an explanation, recommendation, possible solutions for the original software problems. So as a conclusion, you see that software diagnostics is, at least in this interpretation, in this philosophy is mainly human-assisted. But you may wonder what about a computer assistance? Here we provide an analogy with medical diagnostics because we used medical diagnostics as a systemic prototype for analogy and metaphors. However, there is a crucial difference between software diagnostics and medical diagnostics. In medicine, the logic of software is imposed on medical diagnostics, the so-called analytical approach. But in software diagnostics, software is inherent, so it is natural to use software for diagnosing software problems. And so we come to the analytical philosophy of software diagnostics. that considers software as a logical linguistic machine. But we leave analytical philosophy for the second part we plan to introduce in a few month, months. Just a few words about abductive diagnostics. Originally we planned this webinar to be focused on abduction only. What is an abduction? What is abduction or abductive reasoning? You see from the example here. Abduction is very common in medical diagnostics, in law, for example. And from this example, you see it is very applicable to software, trace, and log analysis. However, 
when we started working with the abduction webinar, we found that software diagnostics was missing philosophical foundation. And so we delivered this, started working on these foundations. But we promised to cover abductive logic and its relation to philosophy of software diagnostics in the next part. So a bit of further reading. Here are some books I recommend to read. The first one, Martin Heidegger, The Possibility of a Russian Philosophy. Unfortunately, it's only available for Russian readers, but it was very influential for me to see the possibility of software diagnostics philosophy. The second book, Introduction to Metaphysics by Martin Heidegger, prompted me to delve deeper into a definition of a problem world. The next two books, Being in Time and uh, its interpre Interpretation Guide, a guide for the perplexed, gave me ideas for that sign. And finally, the book about hermeneutics and phenomenology in medicine gave me ideas of meaning structures and meaning patterns. And the second section of this list provides resources for pattern-oriented software diagnostics. When I post this presentation later today, we'll be able to follow the links. And finally, some analogy here. For those who consider that life is similar to software, I provide this pictorial analogy. It is curious that philosophy of Heidegger incorporates death as an inescapable, inescapable, inescapable part of human being. And we also consider blue screens of death as an inescapable part of software. Note that the philosophy of Heidegger is also considered as a philosophy of death one actually of philosophies of death and also philosophy of a new beginning. And so thank you. I am very interested in how to improve this introduction. So please send your comments and suggestions. If I can't answer your questions now, I then post it on Software Diagnostic Services website later this week. And so, thank you for attendance. I probably don't get many questions now because of a very unusual topic that I presented. So thank you very much for your attendance and uh, hope you also attend the second part about analytical philosophy that might be a bit more useful I hope than this one. What I see the usefulness of phenomenological and hermeneutical parts is that you start thinking about human side, human interaction when you practice software diagnostics. So thank you very much for attendance and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.